Welcome to chapter 1, part 6. In this part, our aim is to get the character in our world moving through movement inputs that we set up in the previous episode. In the previous episode, we added our move forward input axis event. On blueprints, the red boxes, the red nodes, are events. And these are where things start. So once this input has been pushed for move forward, this will trigger off the line of actions that comes out of our white execute line here. And you can see also we have the axis value. These are the values that we get from our axis mapping. So if you're using a thumbstick, it'll get me a value between zero and one. If you're using keys on the keyboard, it'll get return zero or one. To make something move forward, as long as it's got a character movement in here, we can add movement input. So you can either get that out by dragging from the pin like so and searching for it, or right clicking in an empty space and searching for it as well. Add movement input is a function node. It's blue and you see the F for function. And it has several inputs. These are pins and the pins on the left of a node are the inputs. If they're on the right of the node, they are outputs. Executes must go into inputs and can flow through out the output. A node with these execute pins in it need execution, otherwise they will not run. To make this work, I'm going to drag my access value into my scale value, and that will allow me to move forwards and backwards, because backwards, remember, is set to negative one, so it will flip whatever I'm pushing on my stick or keys. The target remains itself. This target refers to what is going to be moved. And this is the player character, so I'm going to tell the it to move the player character itself. So I can leave that as it, as it is. The world direction, though, is the direction that we want to actually move it in. And we're going to get that from our camera. So on your component list, you'll see camera, drag that out, and let go. And you'll see a reference to your camera. Nodes that look like this are called references. From the camera pin, we can drag out and get the rotation get the world rotation of our camera get world rotation just gets the rotation of the camera as it currently stands from the return value of our rotator we can get the forward vector and the forward vector is a direction and that will be the forward direction of our camera this is a vector this yellow pin we can drag that and connect up with our world direction. Pins must be of the same type for them to be able to connect. So these vectors could connect, but for example, I cannot connect it to a float, which is this light green one. Click compile and close our window and push play. Now if I push the W key, I can move forward. And if I hit the S key, I'll move backwards. That's because I made that scale value negative one. go back to our player character code here and let's do the move right so search for the axis event move right and very similarly we're going to go add movement input and access value into scale value again but this time the world direction we're not going to use the forward vector of the camera we're going to use the right vector so get right vector and now get the direction immediately to the right of the camera's rota current rotation. Drag that into your world direction, like so. Click compile, and then play. Move forwards, move backwards, left and right. Now do the camera movements. We go and do look up. And the look up event is going to be adding a pitch input. Pitch is looking up and down. Dragging your active value again into that to get the exact value from our input. We're also going to be doing the turn. Add this one is now your input and your controls the left and right rotations. The turning on the spot. Click compile and go into your game and push play. Now move about and look around with the mouse. You'll notice that you can turn left and right, 
but looking up and down, it's locked, you can't do it. Why is that the case? Well, on your player character, let's think about what's happening here. You're telling the whole character to change its look up, its pitch. However, the cam the, because it's the character, you, you're telling this whole entire thing to look up, rather than just the camera to look up, you're telling the whole body to look up, and that doesn't happen, you can't make that the case. Instead, what we want is the camera to look up independently from the rotation of the whole character. So if you click on your camera your component, on the right hand side details, you'll see an option for use pawn control rotation. Turning that on means that it will use the control rotation of our input rather than the control rotation of the character. And click compile. By the way, we have to hit compile every time it doesn't have the green tick. That's because the game has to translate what code we see here into code that the computer understands. So click compile will tell us whether this was translated successfully with a green tick or if there were errors and that will give you a red stop sign. We've got a green tick so that's fine. Click close and play. And now you can find you can look up, turn and move around. And there is our player character's control. And that is it for chapter one in its entirety. Chapter one, let's recap what we covered. We looked at how to start a whole new project, how to create a whole new level in that project. We then moved on to adding a new game mode to our game and where we can set up what is being spawned at the start of the game. We then went through the details of creating a new player character and that involved adding new input mappings and actually adding the code for the character to move around in. Join us in chapter two where we will start looking at level design and creating our first level in our maze game. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.